Our tale begins in Macomb County, Michigan, at the Clintondale Pump Station. Before we go inside, I have to warn you, this story is disgusting, and I don't like disgusting. So of course, my wonderful co-workers decided I'd be perfect to cover a story about things that we find in the sewer. This is a sewage pump station, and in 2018, they found something big in a sewer not far from here. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm here to meet Macomb County Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller. If there's sewer problems, they're her problems. Let's just cut to the chase. What is a fatberg? Well, a fatberg uh, is something that sometimes sewer systems, uh, they're found in the sewer systems. Macomb County found one made up of greases and oils that people have put down their drain rather than disposing of them properly in their garbage. And our particular fatberg was 19 tons, 100 feet long, 100 feet long, 11 feet wide, and six foot tall. That was our fat bird. That's a gigantic clog, and if it gets too big, it can mean raw sewage backs up into basements or gets released into rivers or lakes. The fat bird removal cost $100,000. Its discovery came as Miller's team was looking more closely at what was going on beneath. A few years before Miller became commissioner, an aging sewer pipe collapsed, causing a sinkhole. Part of a major street and a house fell in, repairs costing many tens of millions of dollars. A big story, but the Fatberg, that was even bigger. Okay, good morning, everyone. With a piece of the Fatberg by her side, Commissioner Miller invited the press to come by and see it. The Fatberg had its star turn in the fall of 2018. But as I say, we want to use this as a teachable moment, if we can, for folks to try to change people's behavior of what they're putting down the sewers. What behavior does she want you to change? Well, this is a flushable wipe, and Candace Miller wants you to stop flushing things like this down the drain. Because once this gets in the sewer system, it can form what's called a rag ball. And once oil and grease and dirt and trash get caught up in this, it can start to form a gigantic fatberg. The wipes were the binding agent for the Macomb County fatberg. How do you get this stuff out of the sewer or out of the water system? Well, what you can see here is what we call the rake. And so this thing literally goes down very deep into our wet well here, and it is pulling up these, these wipes, these rags as we call them. And they dump them right into a bin, right? A trash bin oh, here, no. a big dumpster. Oh my goodness, that and is so terrible. So we get uh, several of these dumpsters a week mm -hmm. at this particular facility, just full of these uh, wipes. It looks foul, but the smell is diabolical. Most of the fatberg is now in a landfill but some of it is being studied at Wayne State University's Integrative Biosciences Center, where Tracy Baker looks after it. Do you have an actual piece of the Fatberg here in this lab, correct? That's correct, yes. And so were you really excited when you found out you were going to be working and studying a Fatberg? Were you like, yay? <laughs> I was a little maybe timid at first. Yeah. Carol Miller had um, contacted me asking if I would be interested in studying the Fatberg. Uh, I had to kind of look up what a fatberg was, was before say, I made that know? decision. Carol Miller, no relation to Candace Miller, was the driving force behind getting the fatberg into the laboratory. I'm uh, very interested in what goes through our pipes, so when this huge backup occurred in Macomb County, I thought, wow, this is exactly my sort of stuff. Baker, Miller, and a team of students are getting to know the fatberg up close and personal. So your hands are in the tank, you're right. moving stuff around. So we're just looking to see what we can find in the fatberg. It's mostly plastic and wipes. We found a bunch of tampon applicators, and we can see like sheets like this, which is just um, wipes, looks like. Is there anything in these fatbergs that you guys have pulled out that you're like surprised by? Like, I surprised. never thought that would be in a sewer, much less here with me now. Mustard packets. Yeah. <laughs> Mustard packets. Yeah, it just looks like somebody's trash can. What are we trying to find out? We're trying to find out what sort of compounds are included in a fatberg. We want to know a little more about what sort of chemicals are involved in a fatberg and how could those impact us if bypasses occur and the sewage, the raw sewage goes into the river and then we drink that water. So what we put into the water eventually comes back into our body. But so we'd made... like to know about what's in those pipes. Yeah, you just made your job exponentially more important there when you, you put go. it that way. We think that it's probably acting as a sponge because the wipes kind of absorb. So I think that right. it could definitely be 
concentrating chemicals and then the bacteria because it's sitting in sewage for a long amount of time, like the bacteria, many different kinds of bacteria, potentially harmful ones could be accumulating. So when you're looking at bacteria, is that like a DNA test? Like you're testing the DNA to see which bacteria, to identify the bacteria? Exactly, yeah. So we take parts of the fatberg and then we're able to do an extraction. We concentrate it and then do an extraction and then we do DNA sequencing to look at all the different bacteria so that are part of it. It's 23andMe, but for a fatberg. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay. The research also comes back to the biggest issue concerning this fatberg mess. It's these wipes. When they go down the drain, how do they break down? This is a wipe that was that said that it was flushable after 48 hours. I don't think that's gonna go through. I don't think so either. I'm not the smartest man in the world, <laughs> but... So you can see that is almost fully intact. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. And this um, is flushable. This is a flushable wipe, yep. As you can see, didn't break down. And that's basically what we see for almost all of the wipes that we've been looking at. And giving the wipes more time doesn't seem to help. This particular wipe has been in this water for over a year. A year? And it looks like you just put it in there a it minute ago. It looks brand new. It looks brand new. There are defenders of flushable wipes, which are a worldwide multi-billion dollar a year industry. The Responsible Flushing Alliance, yes, it's a real thing, it's an industry group, says that it's not flushable wipes that's the problem. It's people flushing things like paper towels, feminine hygiene products, and other non-flushable items down the toilet. But the folks specializing in sewage say you shouldn't flush anything but toilet paper. No wipes of any kind, no matter what they say. You know, if you pick one of those up in the grocery store and it says flushable, and you're using it, you're thinking, oh, flushable, I'm flushing it, right? I'm gonna flush it down the toilet. Right. Must be all right, says so right there, you know, on the packaging. Actually, it's a nationwide pro, uh, problem, and even internationally. In fact, London just had to deal with a big fat burg. New York has a big fat burg. They're around, and they're, it's because of all these wipes. There's no safe sewer system anywhere. No, and we're doing it to ourselves. I think the Congress should be passing some legislation that outlaws uh, them from packaging with those words on there, that they're flushable. They should say non-flushable, non-biodegradable. And other than that, if they just did that, that would be fine. 